everyone, it's Reagan, and welcome to the start of another reading vlog. So, it is Friday evening. I just ended my work week reading vlog. So, if you're joining me from that one, hi. Um, so, this weekend is much like every weekend in this household. Clay and I are just gonna hang out. I'm planning on reading a lot of books. Um, I think we're gonna be doing a bit of cleaning. I'm trying to declutter a bit because, um, and all of that, you know, getting prepared for the upcoming fall season, which I know feels far away, but it's also not far away. And I also just am kind of embracing it. You know what I mean? But anyway, so this weekend I do have two books I'm really excited to read and talk about. I've actually been really pleased with my reading so far this month. It's been, I've read less books. I mean, I've read three books so far this month, which is not terrible but it's definitely less than last month, but everything I've read has been such quality. A lot of them are a lot longer, and I'm really just focusing on like tackling the books that are calling to me the most from my bookshelf, regardless of like size and length and all of that shenanigans, which has been fun. So anyway, let's chat about the books I wanna read this weekend. So, um, the first book I'm gonna talk about shouldn't be too much of a surprise. It's The House on the Cerulean Sea by TJ Klune. I got to page 170 of this throughout the week and I'm gonna be finishing this rather promptly this weekend. This is a beautiful, beautiful story of basically a main character, Linus, who is a social worker and his job is essentially to evaluate institutions and orphanages to make sure they're taking care of the magical children they're in charge of um, and ensuring that they have a safe, um, happy environment. He, while he cares deeply about his job and his profession, he doesn't really think beyond his own day-to-day -day interactions and he also has a pretty lonely life and he has the perspective that while he would love to have more people in his life, he just doesn't feel like that is going to happen for him. At the beginning of the book, he's given an unusual assignment where he's sent to a island that has an orphanage that is full of dangerous, magical children. But once he arrives, he realizes the story is much more dynamic than what he was briefed on, and he falls in love with both the children and at this point, I'm halfway through. I think this is also a love story between the man that also runs this orphanage. It is one of the most charming books. I have cried so many different happy tears. The purity, the writing, everything. It's worth all the hype. I love this. So after I feel like I'm gonna have a cheery good time, a little reprieve from all of the really depressing books I have been reading and really intense fantasy novels, intense, depressing fantasy novels, let's put those words together, I figured I'm gonna pick up another intense, probably depressing fantasy novel, um, which is The Rage of Dragons by Evan Winter. This is a book I have been so, so, so excited to pick up. I've heard exceptional things. This is a war-centered fantasy story about a man who is you know, gonna go out and become the greatest swordsman to get his revenge because his family was murdered. So yeah, I hope to finish this, read the last 230 pages and start this and go to go to the way through. This is also a beautifully constructed floppy paperback, which is my favorite format to read uh, high fantasy outside of eBooks, which has been my recent love. Um, but yeah, so these are the books I hope to read this weekend, finish this and get a good chunk of the way through this. So my plans are right now, as I just uh, completed work, is to read more of the House on the Cerulean Sea. I really just can't. This book is like, I feel like I just want to shout about this book from the, from the rooftop. Like I know not everyone loves fantasy, you know? Like the deep epic fantasy books that I personally love. While I want everyone to read those, something about the House on the Cerulean Sea, I feel like anyone can pick up and just immediately fall in love with. It's just such an engaging and lovable story. It's like, I, I've texted so many people to read this book already. I'm rambling. Anyway, I am going to read right now and then wait for Clay to be finished with work. And then I think we're gonna order some takeout and watch a movie, maybe? That sounds kind of fun. Um, yeah, so those are our grand plans for the evening. Read 50 pages, so I'm on page 220. Almost cried again. Who's surprised? Not me. But Clay is finished up with work for the most part for the evening, so we're gonna watch some Ghost in the Shell. We only have four or five episodes left of the standalone complex, which is great. And things are really spicing up, wouldn't you say, Clay? Yeah, it's getting exciting. <laughs> Do you ever do this and then pour a seltzer in it? Because I do. It makes me feel fancy. <laughs> Feeling fancy, right, Millie? <laughs> Cheers, world. Let's watch more anime. <laughs> the Wild 
I couldn't decide between yucca fries and regular fries, and we just said, it's Friday, let's just do both. Friday. Friday. It's Friday, oh yeah, I didn't even think about that. It's Friday, so naturally all the fries. And Ghost in the Shell, things are happening. Hi friends, so we finished Ghost in the Shell. I would give it an eight out of 10. How would you give it, Clay? 7.5 to an 8.5. His okay. range keeps changing. I keep asking him what he'd give it, and he's like 8.5, 7, 7.6. I think I gotta go with the range, I feel, uh, depending on how I feel about it when, in the moment. It, it That's changes. Fair. But That's like, fair. You still it recommend it. It ends really strong, and I would recommend it. It ends really strong, but I don't know, sometimes I found, found myself in my mind wandering when I was watching the show. Yeah. Maybe I'm just distracted, and but I don't know. It, it doesn't just, I've seen shows that are better that it, it just didn't. It just didn't better. like hold your attention, but I think objectively. It held my attention often. It was just, sometimes I felt like I kind of want them to wrap up like this episode. Yeah, that's fair. Um, I thought it was really solid. But I did really like it. And I thought it had good themes. I love the touch comas. I think if I didn't know anything about the show too, I would like it more because I knew it was a very well liked show. So my expectations were very high, high going in. That's fair. And I just come off Naruto. That to Bio Sasuke. So it was no Naruto. They're so different from each other. <laughs> it's just funny to even try to compare. But um, I mean, I would give it an eight. I mean, I think our ratings are pretty close. Mm -hmm. um, so the concepts in the show are really good. And I think. I, oh, go ahead. I was gonna say I think. In some ways, I would have liked the show more back then because maybe the concepts they were talking about back then were more revolutionary versus mm -hmm. now. Like, I've seen those in media a bunch. Yeah. So, like, I've, it, it's not blowing my mind because other people have presented the same concepts. Yeah, before. and it's not its fault because it's been around since the mm -hmm. 80s, but, yeah. But overall, it was a good show. Would recommend 25 episodes. It's another season. The, the characters start to grow on you, too, and I think once the characters yeah. grow on you, the story gets more engaging which kind of happens with any story but yeah i'd give it an 8 out of 10 would recommend i also feel like i'm harder on it or harder on it because i know it's more serious like i watch naruto and i suspend my like critical eye in a lot of ways because like i'm watching naruto for the joy of naruto you yeah. know versus like <laughs> ghost in the shell is like trying to say something <laughs> and naruto is just like I could become Hokage! Yeah. <laughs> like, I mean, friendship! Sometimes the Naruto episode would be like 18 minutes of flashbacks and two minutes of new material. <laughs> like, it's so like, they're object- like, Ghost in the Shell is objectively better than Naruto, but like, also not, because Naruto is the greatest piece of media ever generated. <laughs> I don't know that. <laughs> They're not comparable. Um, so maybe I'm like, I think I'm more critical on Ghost in the Shell because it's inherently like, trying to be something more than Naruto is trying to be. That's fair. You know, like, they're trying to achieve different things. Um, I wasn't even trying. <laughs> no, <I> don't. <laughs> uh, any hoosies. It was good. Now we're going to focus our attention. We're going to watch um, some The Americans were on the last season, and then we're going to watch a lot of Dragon Ball Z Kai. We're going back to Shonen um, for a little while, and then I don't know what we're going to watch next. TBD, but you know, gonna watch a lot next of time on a Dragon, Dragon Ball Z. Z. <laughs> Anywho, we're gonna get to watching a little check in. Um, but just wanted to give you a bit of a review of Ghost in the Shell. Would recommend it's a cool, like, cyber futuristic counterintelligence show about like humanity and like what it is to be existing. Mm -hmm and like w collective versus the individual. It's cool. What is consciousness? What is consciousness? And it's really clever. I liked, I thought it was pretty strong throughout. We did have to watch it pretty piecemeal, which might have been against it too. Mm -hmm. But anyway, we finished it though. And there's another season which we'll watch eventually. Yeah. But yeah, time to watch The Americans though. Good morning everyone. Making a pot of coffee and editing my vlog I'm posting today while listening back to it. Um, so yeah, that is how I'm starting my day. I will check in in a bit. Hi friends, so I'm currently exporting my vlog as we speak and I thought whilst that was exporting, I would do a bit of a haul for you guys. So I'm actually partnering with ThreadUp for this video, which is always really exciting. They're one of my favorite sites, favorite stores of all time. But if you guys aren't familiar, ThreadUp is essentially an online consignment store where you can essentially shop thousands of amazing gently worn items across a variety of different stores. All of my favorite stores are on there from Madewell to Loft to Lou and Gray to and other stores. Truly, there's just something 
something there for everyone. This year I've actually been trying to be more conscientious and buying secondhand or eco-friendly where I can. Um, this shirt is actually secondhand and it's one of my favorites. And that's the reason why I really love Thread Up because it's a super easy way to, you know, celebrate finding new life in clothes from someone else's closet. Might not work for them anymore, but that doesn't mean it's not super cute and super wearable for somebody else. The reason why I really love Thread Up because they have honestly so many incredible items. Many of them still have tags. Many of them are from this current season. So it's a really easy way to shop the trends, be a little more eco-conscious and save money, which honestly I'm here for all of those things. Their site is also amazing. It's very shoppable. You can filter by store, you can filter by size, you can filter by style. So for example, if you're looking for floral dresses in a specific size, you can search and only see search results for things that will fit and what you're looking for, which I think is amazing. They just make it really easy for you to find exactly what you're looking for and only see things that will work for you, which I think is amazing. Me personally, I bought a lot of things that I think will transition super well into fall, but are also super wearable in these sort of awkward months of August and September. They're all really, really cute and I can't wait to show them off. But before I show you the exact items, I do want to quickly shout that I do have an offer code, which I'll have have linked down below, but it's 30% off your first order. So definitely check that out if you're interested, but let's dive into the items. My overall order, I saved over $400 for everything I got. And I always love too that everything comes so nicely wrapped. It just feels like a little bit of like a treasure trove as I take everything out of its packages. All right, so the first few items I of course picked up from Madewell, which we all know is one of my favorite stores of all time. I got three things which I think are so flipping cute, many of which I was eyeing, so to find them secondhand is always amazing. The first item I just love so much, and it's this adorable silk floral cami. I think this is going to be perfect to transition to fall because alone, obviously, it's a camisole. It will work well in warm weather, but I love to layer camisoles like this over t-shirts, over turtlenecks, so I think it'll work really well going into the fall season. Also, like the darker floral pattern I think is really 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 cute but yeah this I love I love the sweet little buttons everything about this I just think is amazing and I actually remember when Madewell was selling this and I was eyeing it but of course it sold out so a little serendipitous to find it via thread up of course this camisole was originally $90 and I got it for $27 so over 50% off as well which I think is an amazing Deal. The next item I got from Madewell I just think is the perfect white button down and it is this super cute cotton sort of like window check patterned blouse. I just think it's amazing because it's lightweight but again will layer super well with like a cardigan going into the fall. It's also just like a classic basic that I will wear time and time again. These sort of short sleeve cotton button downs are some of my favorite to wear at all times and are just some of my favorite things to pick up for Madewell in general. So this was also a really good deal. It was originally $90 and I got it for $28 and it's just something I know I'm going to be wearing time and time again and to layer with chunky sweaters. Ugh. Fall is coming people and I could not be more excited. The last item I picked up from Madewell is this really cute blouse which I think if I ever go back to the office, it will be perfect for the office as well. But it is this three quarter length sleeve peplum kind of crossover uh, blouse. But what I really like is it has this amazing stitching detail on the gray fabric. Again, this is something that I feel like is great for those months where it's still warm, but you want to start dressing closer to the fall vibe. This darker kind of gray with the cranberry thread. I just think it's so cute. And again, though, it's still cotton, so it's breathable, but can be perfect for layering. And I just think this is like classic, easy, breezy, beautiful. I love it all. It's I'm just a fan. And this was an absolute steal. This was originally $96 and I got it for $25. So honestly, thrilled about this. Moving on, I did pick up two really, really cute t-shirts from J. Crew. I love a t-shirt. I don't think that is a surprise. <laughs> it's just something that's super comfy. And again, one of my favorite things to wear in the fall are like chunky cardigans. So having cute t-shirts to layer underneath are key. Both of these t-shirts were under $20. The first one was actually under $15, which I think is a great deal. And it is this super cute pink and red 
uh, t-shirt and it's like a little uh, graphic tee that has a bunch of uh, like tourist destinations in Italy. I personally just really loved the colorway of this. I thought it was a lot of fun and really bright. Um, I don't know, it just kind of like put a smile on my face. I just thought it was really, really, really cute. So I saw it, it was under $15. It is like in like new condition and I thought the colors were really bright and they pumped and they make me excited, I don't know. Yeah, this was originally 33 and as I said, I got it for 14 99 so a super good deal and the other t-shirt I picked up from J crew is just a classic and I just know it's gonna be one that I'm gonna get so much wear out of and I think the colors are really pretty it's just this classic striped um, t-shirt I really like that the base is blue and it has yellow and green running through it so nothing like I love a striped t-shirt but I definitely don't have anything quite like this and it's a really soft cotton very high quality and sturdy it's gonna wash really well which I think is really important when you pick up a cotton t-shirt you want to make sure it actually holds up in the wash um, and will dry well and like hold its shape and I can just tell from this that this is like gonna last me a really long time which is what you want when you buy a classic t-shirt this was under $20 as well I got this for $17 and the original price was $33 as well so a really good price and I know it's gonna be in my wardrobe for many many years to come next item is so cute and I honestly was so jazzed when I found it on thread up I immediately added it to my cart it is from rails which is one of my favorite brands they're pretty pricey so I definitely always try to find them secondhand if I can especially because they make really classic clothes they are really known for their button downs but I found this button down, it is so cute. So it's like a classic striped Oxford. But if you look closely, friends, there are little rainbow hearts all over this. It brings me such joy. I love rainbows, I love button downs, I love stitched hearts. I mean, what more could you possibly ask for? This is just so, 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 so cute. It also is like a really high quality cotton lightweight Oxford. So again, perfect to be able to layer. This is something I can wear to the office. This is not gonna go out of style anytime soon. Button downs are king in my life and I'm so pumped I found this. So again, Rails is definitely pricier. This is originally like $145, which is not something I'd wanna shell out for. So finding it secondhand for $37, much more in my price range, much more what I'm comfortable with spending. And this is so cute. I love the rainbow hearts. And then the last two things are cozy and just like perfect for around the house because I'm still going to be in work from home for the foreseeable future. So I wanted to get some things that would be comfortable and cozy and again, perfect for when the weather starts to get cooler, which I'm so excited about. They're both from Lewin Gray, which has fast become one of my favorite lounge brands. I just feel like their stuff's really high quality and comfortable. Um, and there's so much great Lewin Gray stuff on ThreadUp for really great prices. So the first thing I got was this really cozy, I really cannot articulate how cozy this is, oversized sweater. Um, I thought this would be perfect to wear with jeans, but with leggings, all of it. I also really loved the color. It's this really nice kind of slightly muted sunshine yellow. I don't know, it's just one of those colors that makes me happy while looking at it, but it's really, it has a wonderful weight. It's cozy. I love that it has a sort of dollum sleeve oversized look. I think it's gonna drape super well. And this was such a good deal. This was originally $71 and I got it for 21 on front of, which I think is amazing. And I can't wait to just wear this all around the house. It is so soft. And I picked up another item from Lou and Gray, which was under $15 as well. And just like a classic staple I needed. And that is a pair of black leggings. I don't own a pair of black leggings and I have been wanting to get some from Lou and Gray, but I figured why buy anything full price when I could get them for under $15 on ThreadUp. So I got these to obviously lounge around the house and run errands, do all that shenanigans because we're all on Zoom calls anyway. Um, and so yeah, I got these. They're actually really nice. They're heavier than I was expecting. So they're definitely not gonna be sheer in any capacity. So yeah, this, with this, I just thought was gonna be the coziest, comfiest look. These leggings were originally $36 and I got them for 13. So a really good price. So definitely excited about that price. And yeah, I'm gonna be getting so much wear out of these in the upcoming fall 
season. That is everything I picked up from a thread up. This is gonna be really excited for fall. I cannot wait. As I said, I do have that discount code, so I'll have that link down below. So definitely check that out if you're interested. Big shout out to thread up for partnering with me for this video as I love working with them. I love shopping with them. I think they're amazing. But yeah, that is my haul. Hi friends, I just cannot shake looking unbelievably disheveled today. Apparently my hair is just doing some things, but uh, I wanted to check in because I'm actually about to sit down and do some reading this afternoon. I've just kind of been lounging watching Inuyasha this morning um, and editing and things, but I'm now going to read. But before I did, I wanted to quickly let you know how much I was able to read last night. So I'm now on page 250. So I was able to read a total of 80 pages yesterday. <sighs> I just cannot say enough good things about this book. It's everything. It's so sweet. It's so heartwarming. It's so charming. And it will just feel, fill you with joy, truly. I really think it will. Um, so I'm gonna sit down and try to read like to page 300 and then Clay and I are gonna walk and pick up some lunch, probably watch some Dragon Ball Z, among other things. But I'm definitely planning on finishing this book today and then starting Rage of Dragons either tonight or tomorrow. So that is my goal. So I'm gonna get to reading now and I shall check in once I've read more. But really, I, I really think everyone should just read this book, truthfully. We picked up some Mediterranean platters, yum, and a smoothie. And now we're gonna watch Dragon Ball Z. Hello world, it has been a lazy afternoon. Clay and I watched some Americans. We were gonna watch Dragon Ball Z, but we actually couldn't find a streamable way to watch it. So we pivoted to the Americans, which is very good. We're on the last season. But I have since just been sitting here reading. I forgot to even check in because I was just so excited to pick this book back up. But I'm on page 330. I have 70 pages left. I feel like a broken record, but I truly cannot think of other words to describe this book. It's so... <laughs> it's just like, it'll brew itself in your heart, grow a little garden, and live there forever. Like this is a book I feel like I'm always gonna talk about and I need to read more TJ Klune books because this is just so charming. I love everyone. I will say too, like all the characters have such clear and distinct personalities and it's just so sweet um, to see everyone like pursue their passions or like have their own little moments of growth. It's just so charming. Linus, Arthur, everyone, Zoe, like it's so good. Um, so yeah, I only have so many pages left. And when I finish it, I'll have read 230 pages for the weekend, which I think is great because I still have obviously all day tomorrow, but I could, ju I just simply cannot say enough good things about this book. It is simply one of the most charming and sweet books I have ever read in my entire life. So that hopefully will get you to read it because I really feel like you should. It's so cute. Did I mention the Antichrist is at this orphanage? He is, and he's great. Um, okay, anyway, I'm gonna get back to reading. <laughs> Millie's getting worked up too, but I just finished this book. Clay's working. It was so good. I loved it. I just wanna read it again. It was simply the sweetest, most charming story. I would die for everyone in the story. Oh my God, five out of five stars. TJ Klune, you are a genius. It's like if you mixed, I don't even know. It was so good. What is that? It's like if you mix that Cartoon Network show with, <laughs> I don't know, with just like a Wes Anderson movie and then just fill it with love and sugar and sweetness and everything and it is just the best it's just the best it was just the best i'm gonna watch them in new yasha now but man <laughs> it's time for an evening cup of coffee i need to caffeinate my feelings away because oh my goodness that book changed me <laughs> Hello friends, I have put on a dress for no other reason than I just felt like it. Um, Clay and I are actually about to go on a walk and do a bit of like a dinner in the park situation as we often do on Saturday evenings. I'm not gonna vlog because I try not to vlog whilst I'm out in the world. 
you know, I just don't like to touch this while I'm outside. I like to keep this insular in the inside as I've been doing this entire time. But I just want to show you my, my dress and let you know that we are heading out for a bit, but we'll be back. I've been watching Inuyasha. I'll be watching, I don't know what we're gonna watch now that we can't watch Dragon Ball Z. Hang my book hats up. Um, and yeah, so we will. I will chat with you guys in a bit. I'm still thinking about the house in the Cerulean Sea. It's just burrowed in my heart and my mind for all of time. So sweet. Hi world, we have obviously gotten back from our walk and dinner and we've just been watching The Americans, which, oops, not edit which has been really, really good. So I think we're gonna focus on this um, and then I'm gonna try to figure out how to watch Dragon Ball Z Kai, I suppose, tomorrow. If anyone knows, let us know. But in the meantime, we are just gonna watch The Americans. Happy Sunday, Matilda. Happy Sunday. Yes, that Sunday feeling. <laughs> good morning, everyone. It is a very gloomy Sunday morning, which I was not anticipating. I'm one of those people that checks the weather every day hold on i'm blue as i was saying i'm one of those people that checks the weather every day and no rain in the forecast so it was quite the nice surprise waking up and checking as i do every morning to see that it's gonna be raining all day so it's gonna be perfect reading weather this sunday i won't lie clay and i stayed up really late last night watching the americans we watched six episodes of that show yesterday and each episode is an hour long the last season is so Good, so we're definitely on track to finish it very, very soon, and we just need to figure out what we're gonna watch next. Um, I'm that kind of person. I like to have things planned um, <laughs> in advance. Um, but the show's great, and that was really fun to stay up late and watch that. But now it's like late morning, um, got a cup of coffee. Clay has to do some work this morning through the afternoon, so I am gonna just read, hang out, uh, I do have one video I want to film today. Because it's gloomier, I am going to test out my new LED light panel I got myself for filming. See if I am technologically advanced enough to set that thing up. Um, but I have a video set up. Rather, I have a video like written out that I want to film. It's a recommendations video. Um, so I'm excited about that. So I'm going to film that. And then obviously my main priority today is to read a good chunk of The Rage of Dragons by Evan Winter, which I'm super excited about. I also am just like looking forward to reading this paperback. Um, I've been reading a lot of eBooks because of my <laughs> carpal tunnel <laughs> um, and my elbow issues, which is like, I don't know, kind of embarrassing, <laughs> but um, due to my work from home setup, it's been really aggravating my wrist and elbow problems. So holding really heavy hardbacks that are fantasy has just been a little painful, which is another reason why I've been reading eBooks, obviously, um, reading ebooks I read quicker, but the weight of it is a lot nicer too. But this is a pretty, like, I can read this. Like, this is a not super heavy and it's floppy, which will make it really easy to read. It's those, like, huge, heavy, um, hardbacks, which I love to have for my bookshelf, but they can be a little cumbersome when it comes to actually reading. I may need to get one of those, like, book lap thing, like something I could put on my lap that will, like, keep the book open. I don't know, does that even exist? But anyway, yeah, I, I, is that a sign of getting older? But I have elbow and wrist issues and sometimes it hurts for me to read. I have carpal tunnel and carpip, carpipital, it's the elbow one. It impacts these fingers. <laughs> anyway, um, so yeah, it's Sunday morning. I really just plan to film and read, hang out, watch Inuyasha. Matilda's here. Clay and I are gonna get bagels, I think a little later, from our favorite bagel place, which I'm really excited about. It's gonna be raining all day. And that's truly the plan, Stan. So, yeah, I'm gonna light a candle. It's happening, it's going down. Figuring out my LED panel light, because I wanted to remove the flap, the flaps, I'll show you. <laughs> that little thing, um, so I can fit in here. So I used some screwdrivers this Sunday morning. I'm also watching Haley's new book haul. Matilda's also enjoying. So, you know, we're having a little bit of a bookish Sunday. All right, we have the light set up. I'm about to start filming um, I'm gonna test this guy out which is very exciting so I changed temporarily I will be back in my sweater soon though this dress is basically like a tent and very very comfortable picked up some Sunday bagels as you do and we're gonna watch more Americans because I wasn't kidding we literally cannot stop watching it it's so good hi friends so Clay and I went out and shot some photos that I'm about to post today and then I also stopped by a coffee shop and I picked up my first to go coffee 
since March, which is really exciting. But now I have filmed, I showed some photos, I am kind of done with my to-do list for this Sunday and I'm just gonna enjoy this rainy weather. I'm actually gonna sit now and start The Rage of Dragons. Um, I'm gonna put some classical music on the speaker for Clay to work to and me to read to. And I think it'll be a nice relaxing Sunday. So that is the plan. Um, just kind of wanted to give you guys a bit of an update. So I'm gonna quickly import, edit these photos, and then I'm going to start reading. Hi friends, I wanted to do a reading check-in because I have read 75 pages of The Rage of Dragons so far. And this book is really, really interesting and starts off very intensely. So this is definitely a war-centered fantasy story. And going in, I knew like a general synopsis about our main character and his like desire to enact vengeance and become this greatest swordsman of all time, but a little more context about the world from the 75 pages I've read so far. So it opens on kind of like a prequel epilogue chapter of like 183 cycles earlier. Um, and essentially it's like this invading force who had fled their land due to some reason, something called the Cull, and they basically left to try to, you know, save themselves and settle somewhere else and they found somewhere else which but this place had people already residing on it so they basically attacked them trying to steal the land um calling down this dragon and all of that so like a lot of violence and then we cut to the present with our main character and this conflict that occurred 183 cycles which i'm not sure if equates to years or maybe generations prior um, is still occurring there's still this conflict between the natives that lived in this land and this invading force or the chosen ones um i'm only 75 pages in there's definitely a lot more of the politics in the world to uncover but so far too there's also the magic system is very war focused as well and it seems like different people have different abilities like different peoples um so the chosen who we follow as our primary main character there's like a few different types of magic one there are individuals called the gifted and i believe these are always women and these this type of magical ability it's kind of unclear but it seems like they have the ability to one like pair up with a warrior or a man and make them like really strong and really powerful and they're connected and they like share energy in that way um so that's one and, and i think they also have the ability to send out like mental things i think in the same version that they're, they're able to send out uh energy so they're able to for example make you really terrified or try to basically immobilize enemies by sending out like a wave of power and then three they can also control dragons so i think that is very difficult and not everyone has the ability to call down dragons but that's definitely part of the magic system and again i think only women are gifted in this way and the men among our main characters people are warriors and being involved in the military is not just lauded but like an expected way of life and if you choose to not be a part of the military you are ostracized and basically given and labeled the lowest position in society and everyone treats you like crap so our main character is kind of like training for the military um he's young though he doesn't totally know what he wants to do but there's a raid that happens at the beginning of this book that i think again is what sort of changes the course of his life forever structurally speaking uh the political nature of this world is really interesting there are like different castes depending on obviously who you're related to like a nobility but the structure is a little different um and it's a matriarchal society so like queen's rule and also like your place in society is based on who your mother is not your father which i think is interesting something to note um additionally i am just like really interested i don't know I, i've only read 75 pages but so far i just think it's grabbed my attention very quickly like there has been battle after battle after battle and how this book is written is also pretty cool there's like chapters but it's almost like it's more like mini parts because there's like a chapter and then within that chapter there are like different cuts like sub chapters essentially and it denotes like different views of the same scene um which i kind of like so it's almost like mini parts but it flows the narrative style really quickly and makes you read it really quickly which i enjoy quite a bit but yeah so far i'm definitely just trying to get settled in this world i'm very intrigued the magic system is really cool and i think fits sort of the very war focused nature of this book um i'm excited to kind of get more of an understanding of both people involved obviously i only have the viewpoint of the invaders of this land but i feel like 
that is going to be expanded because there's obviously a lot of mysteries at play here and our main character Tao I think will be kind of going on a larger expedition in some capacity I'm not sure but regardless I'm interested to find out I am liking this book a lot though it's definitely caught my attention right off the bat I did want to flag though this is very violent um, definitely military focused so just know that if you're interested in picking this up but yeah I'm gonna do more reading now a quick break from reading which by the way got to page 100 of the rage of dragons um, I just wanted to edit the video I filmed today um, and honestly my lights worked out pretty well I think so that's really exciting but I'm gonna put in Yasha on now hey Hey, bae. Give myself a little manicure, pedicure situation. Try to look a little less, you know, of a disaster and just hang out. I also need to put my light away, but you know, I'm really enjoying this uh, cloudy day and so is Millie. She has not moved. <laughs> just wanted to show off my rainbow nails and also casualty. Just want you to know that a thumb was lost in the turning on of this camera. <laughs> Cheers, Matilda. Enjoy your latte. Just kidding, it's fine. I didn't mean to upset you. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna drink this latte. I'm gonna do a bit more reading and then Clay should be done with work. I'll flip you around. And then Clay should be done with work soon and then we're gonna hang out, which I'm excited about. Woo! Um, yeah, it's just been a really relaxing Sunday. I love a rainy Sunday. It's just the best. Um, and The Rage of Dragons is so captivating so far. It's so fast paced. It's like a book that will like you kind of hit the ground running with the narrative like you're in it you're like what in the world is going on <laughs> like you're like dropped in the middle of just battles and you're just trying to orient yourself which i personally always think is an interesting way to encounter a book and when i am in books like that i read like everything so carefully because the world building is done like it's it's not holding your hand with the world building like you have to pay attention to things as you go along which i think is kind of great and it provides like a level of suspense as like you begin to uncover things um and everything as well so i don't know it's really it definitely catches hold of you quickly um so so far so good read to page 150 i think i'm actually gonna make dinner a little early because i'm starving but the political structure of this book is really really interesting and i really appreciate like most fantasy books but this book has kind of an explanation of the struck of the structure in the back which is also really handy basically organized by nobles and lessers and you're born into these two groups and i don't think you can jump between groups unless there's a specific instance where you can if you test to be part of the gifted um, which only women can test for it's a really small group it's the people who can control um, the ingoyama which are men who can become enraged with the the gifted's power as well as the gifted can do some other things as well. I don't think Ingoyamas can occur outside of the noble group though, um, but I'm not entirely sure, but I do think that's the case. But the structure of this world is really interesting and the there are hard lines and that like interactions and movement between groups is very difficult. Given where our character falls within the, the structure, it's definitely really felt and kind of seeing him move throughout the world is interesting and kind of the implications of all of that. Um, Cause even though, like for example, his closest friend is technically a noble, um, but because he's a lesser, he can't really express his opinion. And when he does, it dramatically changes sort of the relationship between the two of them because the noble inherently views lessers as such. So they don't really want to hear an opinion, even if they view them as a friend and a close. Um, so that is definitely a part of this book, but I'm gonna start dinner now. In other news, I put a bunch of fairy lights in this jar and I thought it was cute, so that's a thing. Tonight, friends, I am making a simple black bean quesadilla with poblano, some scallions, and tomatoes. I have another meal delivery I'm using, super handy saves me all the time and brain power but anyway i'm gonna put this together now be cooking up the filling which i kind of changed the recipe a bit because i like a lot of beans so i added a can of refried beans and then i'm gonna saute the beans with the poblano and the tomato and then it'll just be like bean city up in them quesadillas you know yeah no so this will be this will be all set to start um putting together in like five minutes now we brown. Bon appetit. Naturally pulled out the Cholula. So I'm gonna go eat this 
can watch a new Yasha right over there. Dinner is consumed and we're about to start a new show because we finished Ghost in the Shell. Um, so we're starting Samurai Shampoo, which I haven't seen in a million years. I've seen some of these episodes before too, I think. But I think, I don't remember anything yeah, about. I think most of us, him and I both, I've seen the whole show and I honestly don't remember anything. So this will be like the first time watching for both of us. So I got a new thing off the internet where you can pop popcorn, like not in a bag form with just like olive oil and the microwave. So we're gonna test this, we're gonna test this out. And then Clay and I are going to watch more Samurai Shampoo over there. So you mix half a cup of kernels in some olive oil and then you just plop this guy and then put it in the microwave for like four minutes. Not gonna lie guys, that was incredibly successful. This thing is so handy. And I feel like it's like a lot less waste too. Yummy. Just put some salt and butter on top. Back to TV watching. Hi friends, so anime consumption is over for the evening and I'm gonna get back to reading. As I said, I've already passed 150 page mark of um, the Rage of Dragons. So I'm gonna try to get to page 250, which will get me over 500 pages for the weekend. So 100 more pages tonight. Um, but yeah, I am <laughs> honestly reading through this book really fast. It's just a book that is very intense very quickly, again, because it's war-centered fantasy. It's an interesting contrast when I think about the Poppy War slash the Dragon Republic, which is also war centered, which is grim dark. And I don't know if this is grim dark. I don't think it is, just based on how it is. Um, it definitely still paints a gruesome picture of war, but it's just like different. It's like a different approach, obviously, than the Poppy War, as it should. It's a different book. Um, and that's not a negative thing. It's just more to say, like, it's interesting to read those books back to back, given that they're both so war heavy. Um, an element of this that I'm liking though is I feel like the author has a really good handle on like describing combat. Sometimes when you're reading combat it's supposed to feel chaotic because the you know the our main character that we're reading from feels the chaos and things are unsettled but sometimes when you read combat it just feels chaotic and that can just be because combat is really hard to write um, and like battles and things can get really disorienting if you know, not done correctly. All this to say is that I'm liking Evan Winter's approach to writing combat. It's very clear. And I say that too because the magic is introduced in the midst of combat, which can be a chaotic scene to try to explain something, especially a complex magic system um, that's really unique and original. Um, so really it's just kudos to say like, he is, I just feel like Evan Winter's really good at describing combat in so it she's also able to give vital and necessary information of like the world through it, which just like gives it a really strong basis, especially again, because I feel like there's going to be a lot of battle scenes in throughout this entire book. I feel like it's going to be very war centered, which in general, I really like, especially when the author like Evan Winter is doing is able to really construct a like solid scene and also describe the strategy of how the battle is unfolding. Um, because to me, that really helps root my brain in the book and also get an understanding of what's going on. Um, so that's just like another thing I'm really liking about this, which I wanted to call out. But yeah, I'm gonna read another 100 or so pages tonight and I will do a bit of a check-in later or tomorrow, depending on how far I get. But yeah, just wanted to say, hey, it's later. We ate that popcorn and now I'm gonna do some reading. <laughs> Hi friends, welcome to the end of the vlog. The next day, I just wanted to quickly pop in and wrap up both of the books I was able to read this weekend. Before I chat about the book specifically, I did wanna quickly shout out that my thread up offer is down below. Definitely check that out if you wanna save 30% off your first order. But now jumping into the books themselves, obviously I read the remainder of The House in the Cerulean Sea, the last 230 pages in this book literally made my heart sing. Simply one of the most charming, adorable stories I have read in a long time. I cried multiple times from happiness. It's simply just one of the happiest, most heartwarming books I've read in a long time. Read it if you want to pick me up because this will put a smile on your face. And then from there, I was able to get to page 250 of um, The Rage of Dragons by Evan Winter. I'm really liking this book. Now that I'm on page 250, which is about 
about halfway through. I definitely feel a lot more settled in the world. Just know when you pick this book up, I would say the first 50 or 60 pages is really focused on getting you kind of rooted in the world. You kind of have to really pay attention, otherwise I think you can get confused of like the world building and things, but once you kind of get settled, recognize the structure, understand the magic, it all really starts to come together. And where I'm at now, the main character is in training and in like warrior school or military school, military academy would be a better word for it. And it's really interesting and I'm excited to, I think our main character, we're gonna watch him like grow up. Obviously he's seeking vengeance. I love a vengeance tale. And now that he's at the academy too, I feel like I am getting a much larger view of the political structure of the world, not just like our main character in his home and like his like day-to-day -day politics because they impacted his life from that perspective. But now that he's at the military school, we're kind of seeing a larger political picture as it expands the entire kingdom, which I think is really interesting. But yeah, I'm about 50% of the way through this. I'm excited to continue to watch our main character, Tao, learn how to fight, get involved in the military. What I'm hoping for is kind of an unraveling of the like hidden politics of this world. I feel like there's a lot that's kind of told the people and they're just expected to live that life, that existence and like not, you know, question it, be it that they're born a lesser, be it that they're born weaker than the chosen, you know, royal class and things like that, as well as the unending military expedition that has been going on against the native individuals of this land for like 200 years. Like all of this is just taken to just be fact and I feel like our main character is going to be exploring that and like questioning a lot of that which I think is going to be really interesting throughout the rest of the book but anyway I'm really liking it I'm hoping to finish it throughout this week it's definitely a quick read um so yeah that is my plan so I was able to read just about 500 pages this weekend hopefully you guys enjoyed this reading vlog and I will see you soon with another video soon goodbye